say we had hunters in nominations face Scots, writers, activists, performers, and we've whittled them all down to a really tight shortlist of nominees. So give a, a first a big round of applause to Abdi nominated for the award tonight. <laughs> we've got smashing, we've got smashing poems coming for you tonight. We hear some smashing signs for Beth and for Robin Stapleton. And we also hear some live stand-up comedy as part of the event this evening. But I'm delighted to say we're also joined by a lassie that has now done over 800 Scots Word of the Days every day for more than two years. She's bodied more than 1,000 online misogynists and Scots language deniers. Her name is Len, the ginger ninja, Penny! <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, lads. <laughs> I'm delighted to say that my co-star tonight, Mr. Alistair Heather, has the supreme distinction of being nominated for 12 Scots Language Awards and winning a grand total of zero. So far, <laughs> night, the night is young. Tonight Tonight's is your young. night, pal. <laughs> We date and he'd have better coming up the night. He made in 50 nominees up for a dozen awards and most of them are here tonight. We have our first summer without COVID restrictions and we've seen Scots get back out the house and Stravagan again. Indeed, this summer we've seen things like any of the most important plays of the Edinburgh International Festival, Medea, hearing huge chunks of the Scots language in it. We've seen the Scots Sangsters we hear here the night and loads of others getting back onto stages in Scotland, in the UK, all around Europe and right the way over to the States as well. Indeed, Iona Fife, the great Sangster, is usually a fixture of these awards. Can he be here? Because you're currently on like a, a hundred date tour of the United States. So Scott is getting back out the house and it feels good, doesn't it? Last year it was all about what folk had managed online and now we're seeing nominations for folk that have lit up stages, communities, shops, as well as our social feeds. We've taken lessons for lockdown life actually and we hey right in the middle there, we hey a live feed fe, uh, going out for here to a potential audience of billions internationally. <laughs> and uh, so you's watching the hey, you're absolutely part of this as well. We'll be monitoring all the comments coming in on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. So you can just let us ken while you're watching, Faye. Let us ken what you think of what uh, everything's going on tonight. And also, give us your favourite Scots language joke. And me and Len will redo the best ends we get in. Please, um, please keep it clean. <laughs> keep it clean, aye. <laughs> you can. It's giving me a family event, eh? Right, shall we crack on? We should. We can use our all nervous. I know I am. But we will only keep you waiting hour long. And before we get into our first award, let's hear another tune, eh? Let's hear again for the Beth Malcolm Trio. Well, hello. Um, that we obviously had to start with a with a Mara tune since we're in Dundee tonight, um, and you've given the game away because you sang along so well there. Um, so I'm going to teach you a new song tonight that I've written um, for now. Um, it's called Ain Vice, um, and it's really written for many of you out there who are those teachers or people that Scots speaking bairns look up to. Um, so now that I know that you're great singers, I hope you'll sing along with me. Um, Lewis, could you give me a wee note so I know where to start? There we go. So, oh, that's good. Um, so I'm going to teach it now so it goes. Who will sing Oh, the guys in? Try that. Who will sing Oh, the guys in the bare knees blether to the audience. The bare knees blether to the audience. Lovely. Who will sing? Oh, the grey lag. Who will sing? Oh, the grey lag. Who tack their leave when the leaves turn? Who tack their leave when the leaves turn? Who will sing in her language? Who will sing in her language that we love her brothers in? That we tell her stories in? That we love her brothers in? That we tell her stories in? Well, you will hear that and I'll, I'll hope to hear you singing along. So here we go. This is called Ain Vice. Who will 
Amazing, amazing. Keep it going for the Beth Malcolm Trio. <laughs> they were class, weren't they? Now, I'm delighted to say we'll hear a word for the maze. Ken Speckle, braidcaster, activist, and ally of Scots. A person that I like to call the papa of the Scots lead, Mr. Billy Kay. <laughs> Good folk. 
It's a pleasure to the Eden to see so many brawly busket lads and lassies, so many Ken Speckle mackers, chanters, and chanty wrestlers all gather in the ye place. You do realize, though, that if the police for the ferry raids the garden and huckles us all awaw to the jail, the hail of the Scots language movement gets done in ye nicht. It'll no happen, though, for I hate for the chief constable himself that none of you'll be oxter cogged out the guard in the night. <laughs> Hain come over the tie brig to Bonnie Dundee. I bring ye brotherly salutations for the kingdom of Fife. Like Rabbi Burns, I was born in Kyle, but my mother's family were miners for Bowhill and the wee Moscow's of West Fife, for... At the turn of the 20th century, a skilly North East marker cried David Rory, leaved, and he wrote, Aberdeen and Twelve Mile Rune, Fife and all the lands about it, Tain fi Scotland's runkle map, little's left, and wha would doot it? Rory wrote as a doctor and scrive a book on traditional medicine, as well as collecting the folklore o Ochter Derren Parish, including the old source. Yen of my favourites could well apply to my wee one-year-old granddaughter, Katerina. She's as fly as the Fife Kai, and they can knit stockings with her horns. <laughs> she has a male of Scots, Portuguese and Italian heritage and has the gleg luck of a buddy that's been here afore and diddling folk for desert de Pompey since time began. David Rory minds us, though, that we all, when he's up, the Scots we learned at our mother's knee, but we all, when tuck tent, to acknowledge that we belong as will to a national lead, cried Scots. See, elka time we refer to Dundonian or Doric, Shetland or Hoek, Ulster Scots or Galloway Irish, Mind and tell folk that they're all broad dialects with a good Scots tongue that we've been speaking, screaming, and lewing for mere nor a thousand years. In the past year, we've had a queen reasons to look for it with a bit more optimism. The Scottish Government has started a consultation that should lead to a Scots language bill giving mere official recognition to both Gaelic and Scots. The cross party group on Scots that dwined after the 2014 referendum is back with Smedham to push things for it. And we have to thank Emma Harper for furthering that and the Yes or Mayor Scots in the Parliament. Emma invited me to give what was likely the first speech in Scots in the Parliament since afore 1707 and a Gadoon wheel in the Chalmer itself at the time and I hope that it'll be the first of money. In the skills and colleges, mere recognition is gained to Scots as an asset. Publishing in Scots gets stronger ilk a year, helped by the Scots Publication Grant I, but also because of all the young screevers finning their own vice in the lead, vices that demand to be heard. The Scots Language Centre is now a bee's bike of activity for promoting Scots. Lallan's Magazine is 50 year old this year and gone strong with Wally Hershaw as the new editor. Thanks to bony factors like George Watt, who's even older than me, for keeping the low of the Scots lead associate alive. Scots Language Dictionaries gave his strength to strength and it's good to see them racks new a horn to other leads for by English with its Scots Polish dictionary. Scots international dimension is personified to in Palavra Escocesa, Obrigada a Nossa Menina Nicola no Brasil. Thanks to our last for a war in Brazil, Nicola, for doing such a good darg and bringing a canon of the lead to the Portuguese speaking world. But I'd like to end back here at home in the here and now, to thank a puckle folk that are no proponent for awards the nicht, but what they say muckle for Scots. Yen of them's Simon Tumir, 
the horns up for trad. Po, with the help of Matthew Fitt, maker of this parish, got their awards and the Scots element in the trad award set up. Gies a horn for Simon Tubier. <laughs> also, a heartfelt bozy to our two Bayorner presenters, Len Penny, for our Scots word of the day that's got thousands more folk to attend to Scots, and Ali Heather for all the ver he gives out to he's up were in mother tongue. And finally, a special mention to our Ken Speckle Quine that makes to you Ken on Twitter as at Miss Elliot, also Kent as Laura Law, who am given a special award to cried the Undemus Tholan Obams Award. <laughs> For this and ilka other year, for when the unka bad show the rugsome ignorance of Scots on social media and foul like me block them rather than gay totally rage at them, Saint Laura O'Lithgay, for those the title she deserves, ladies and gentlemen, Saint Laura O'Lithgay, says something like, Dear Wally 1690, 1690, 1690. <laughs> You make no recognise what ye speak as a lead, but a wheen important institutions day. Say, here's a booklet to get you and your twa trusty fears at Billy Boy for Heed <laughs> and at Bainwater Loyal start it on your Scots education. Enjoy. <laughs> here's to Laura and to all the folk that they say muckle to Mark Sicker that this, our ain dear mother tongue, holds for it, say strongly, in 2022. Mikkel, thanks, and enjoy your next. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Billy Kay, ladies and gentlemen, Billy Kay. <laughs> okay, okay. Are we ready for our first award of the night? That was actually pretty good, but there was free bevy on the door, and part of the contract is, if you're geed free bevy, he'd be dead noisy for you, right for the app. So are you ready for your first award of the night? <laughs> Our first award is for Scots Project of the Year, which is sponsored by Scots Radio. The nominees are... Emis Stain. The Essential Scots Polish Dictionary from the DSL. Keith TMSA Festival. Lallans, and the Lowen and Hall Library Ulster Scots competition in pamphlet and Palavra Escocesa, and the Maiden's Leap. <laughs> to present the award, please welcome for the Scots Language Centre, Laura Green. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to say how nice it is to be here tonight and to thank um, our first performers and also thanks to Billy Kay because I think the Beth Malcolm trio minded us just what we're doing here and why we're supporting the Scots. We're here to help folk grow 10 feet tall and be proud of using their own voice. And I think that Billy Kay just minded us all exactly how we're all doing that every day. So thanks to folk that have spoke so far. Okay, project of the year. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Fab. Goes to the maiden's leap. <laughs> didn't think we would win when all that amazing stuff was on the board. Me and Fiona have met for the first time tonight because everything we did was over the phone. Um, so what we did is 
Joanna wrote this amazing Scots poem um, that we as Perth High School, my first years, they did um, a glossary so that folk could understand it. And then we scribed some poems and they were published and the kids were absolutely ecstatic. They um, were dancing around the school telling everyone they were published poets. And the fact that they are writing is in a magazine that was then in how many different places? Oh, it's across Scotland. It's across Thousands Scotland in abbeys and things everywhere. And they were absolutely so excited with it that we now have a whole batch of new Scots poets. So uh, thank you very much. I don't know if you have anything no, you want no. to add, <laughs> but you know, thank you. <laughs> Our next award is getting mayor and mayor competitive. Ilka year we day these things. It's the Scott Barons Book of the Year. Nominations for Scott Barons Book of the Year, sponsored by the Scottish Government, are. A series of Scunnersome events, The Boggin' Beginning by Thomas Clark. Doric Nursery Rhymes for Loons and Quines, translations by Gordon M. Hay. The Itchy Coo book, A Aesop's Fables and Scots by various authors. And The Tin Egg by Aaron Gale. Wheeshed by Susie Briggs. To present the award, please welcome uh, stand up comedian, radio and telly personality, Marjolaine Robertson. Um, it's lovely to be here. I just want to say as well, the most amazing way to preserve in tongues is in my mother tongue. And that's also in the Moose the Babes. When bairns go to school, they can often lose their Scots, they can lose their Doric or Shetland as they learn to read books that are always written in English. So what I would again as a bairn have had so many books written in their own language. And it's so amazing to see this happen anew. So well done to everyone nominated because what a wonderful thing to give to the bairns. <laughs> so sorry, the envelope. Um, so the winner for this category is Doric Nursery Rhymes. <laughs> and quines. <laughs> I was this fair trigger to be nominated, but I'm even mere shoot it to he won. <laughs> Although it was just my name that appeared there, I only did the words. Fit Max the Buke is the illustrations by Rosie Cunningham for Gleske. I'd never met her, we were doing others during COVID. We did thing but email, and Elka time she sent me an image, I just loved it. So a big thank you to Rosie, a big thank you to the Doric Board for their support and their encouragement, and maybe just a wee example. You all, of course, know that Dr. Foster went to Gloucester. Well, my doctor gangs to my home tune of Turriff. <laughs> but if you bide in Turriff, you don't have Turriff, you can't Turra. So Dr. Murray <laughs> get to Turra in a smear of wheat. He steeped in a puddle right up to his middle and got dobs all over his feet. <laughs> I'm a wee bit eh, like the coo in, hum, in a hey diddle diddle. I'm just over the mean. Thank you. <laughs> that is our first Twa Awards after Twa great winners. Please welcome a previous winner um, and a Scottish Slam Poetry Champion and a finalist in the World Slam Championships in Paris. Please welcome Hamish MacDonald. How are you doing? Great to see you. What was that? 
Grand, spot on. OK, um, I'm going to do... I'll start with some Bairn rhymes, because after all, we're all big Bairns. So that's my first reason. My second reason is these ones have got no swearing in them. OK? <laughs> Um, so I'll tell you a wee bit about my tune, the tune I come for, and uh, we'll go through the tune, and uh, we'll meet some characters, and we'll get some sights, soons, and smells as we go through the tune, OK? So we're going doing, doing the tune, doing the tune of my wee tune, who's you meet on the street, on the street of my wee tune? Here's wee Nafiz Izzy. Let me tell you about Nafiz Izzy. Nafiz Izzy's in a tizzy, cos her ginger is nae fizzy. So she weeks at whirls, at wanners, at birls, at judders, at jugles, at shimmies and shugles, at batter and splatter and dirling and whizzing, gain at laldy and tent of the dizzin, doosh, sploosh, bloater and whoosh, no open your cork and try the scoosh, you whit! Your ginger is nae still no fizzy, is it, Izzy? Aye, then Nafiz Izzy falls down dizzy, if we try to make her ginger fizzy. <laughs> Going down, down the tune, down the tune at our wee tune, would you hear on the streets, on the streets of our wee tune? You might hear the old gossiping wifeys. See that McClatchy, what do you think? Him howling and brawling and full of the drink. Fights with shad and then gets arrested. Poor Mrs McClatchy, she's pure flabbergasted. The Gallagher's house is off the untidy. Willie McGee gets his gyro on Friday. That Douglas Smith needs pitting doing it, but we Chloe Fraser and old Mr Brune. Cheryl McCarroll and Paula McClafferty. Geraldine Sweeney and Mary O'Rafferty. Sheena Donnell and Moira, Moira McCafferty are gone up the tune for the bingo on Saturday. The whole world's news, you'll soon ken it all when you're out for a walk to the shops with my ma. Going down, doing the tune, doing the tune of my wee tune. What do you smell on the streets, on the streets of my wee tune? Let me introduce you to Clatty Watty. <laughs> oh, Clatty Watty, he lurks down the sewers. He prowls on her grun in the wee small hours. And his muckle chest waders and hodding a net. Shockling through murk in the dank fichy wet. Scooping his net in a dark manky pool with a glint in his ee and his face like a ghoul while sifting a mang o' the glor for his treasure with scarcely a hint of disgust or displeasure. For here lie the things that folk lose doing their cludges, gold Rolex watches and poor wayward budges, sook doing the thrapple with unquenchable greed by a great wide mouth monster cried, Shanks a bore heed. And the bowels of the tune, where the licht never skinkles, where the brown lava flows and the cold water tinkles, why he trolls for his trinkets and he fishes them out, and he binnings them up in a gouping old clout. And he sclims out a stank lid and him where they goes, to give them a blast with a high pressure hose, a wee dicht of polish, a wee tate of glue, to get all his gear looking brand spanking new. And he opens his shop at half nine every morning, and the old wifeys like fleas to a keech they come swarming, <laughs> to hunt for a bargain and fill tartan trolleys with whirly gigs, geegaws, and second-hand wallies. <laughs> and they stand by the mirror with a great soak of brief, admiring their cells and their shiny new teeth and watty, stands by the counter in his wee cave of gold with 100% profit on each item sold. So come on down and do your bidding, the shop's called Watties. Lucky midden. <laughs> Going down, down the tune, down the tune of my wee tune. There's a kirkyard and there's gravestones and there's epitaph epitaphs in the gravestones. And you can get your end back in people that weren't very nice during their lifetime. And here's one or two in the graveyard. This one here says, In memoriam, M.C. Jardin. Here lies old misery chops Jardin. He kept all the boys we kicked into his garden. <laughs> To commemorate his dear departed soul, we used burst boys to fill this hole. <laughs> and one here, in memoriam, N.F. Burton. Here lieth old Nebby features Burton. She spent all her days kicking through a net curtain, checking the neds and tutting up vandals, cloaking the neighbours and dreaming up scandals. Now she's six foot of blows, still mumfing and scoffing. Cos we fitted a wee windy to the lid of our coffin. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'll just finish off with some... Um, I'll raise the intellectual bar and do some haikus. Um, as you know, the haiku is a kind of... Um, you may know that the, the haiku is a, a kind of... I think it originated in 14th century Japan and it has five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the second line and five syllables in the third line. And these are some uh, specifically Scottish haikus, OK? So this is my first one. Uh, Big-horned beastie roams, 
chewing on psilocybin. Out it's not. Haiku. <laughs> Bovine creature stones, depressed by winter weather, piss and rain, loco. <laughs> Grazing ruminant contemplates average field, 30 midland queue. Murderous longhorn on homicidal rampage, gouging sheep, psycho. <laughs> Ayrshire in big specs, dressed as jocular GI, that's Sergeant Bill Coo. <laughs> Belted Galloway, disguised as Alvin Stardust, my Kukachuku. And finally, Aberdeen and Angus, speaking to his wife and Doric, fit like the new coup. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Cheers. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Keep it going for Hamish McDonald's and Haikus. <laughs> the next award is for Scots Speaker of the Year, sponsored by the Scots Language Centre. Nominations for Scots Speaker of the Year, sponsored by the Scots Language Centre are Billy Kay, Jackie Ross, and Mario Lane Roberts, and I got it right that time. <laughs> <laughs> to present the award, put your hands together for Dr. Scots himself, for the Scots Language Centre, it's the director of the centre, Dr. Michael Dempster. <laughs> Dr. Scots himself, right. Thanks a lot for that intro, Ali. This is Amazing seeing everybody out there. Um, and before we came on, just listening to everybody, speaking to one another, a few of the different dialects, celebrating our differences and hearing what we've all got the same. And Scott's Speaker of the Year Award, this is what it's all about. It's, it's all speaking, using our voices that we tend for our homes and places that you're no meant to speak, places like the stage, places like the school, places like the uni, the nursery, on the telly. And we're all doing that. I'm sure everybody in here has been told they can speak for Scotland at one point in their life. <laughs> and what we all want to do is be getting that out there so mere and mere folk take the lead for us. And Scots Speaker of the Year Award represents that. Just normal talking the way we date one another. And I can't even find the way you open this envelope. <laughs> so, so much for the smooth transition. There we go. Right. So this year's Scots Speaker of the Year Award sponsored the Scots Language Centre as Mary Elaine Robertson. <laughs> Very much. Um, firstly, I'm sorry it took me that long to get down the stairs, but I thought that the reception started at seven and the show started at eight. <laughs> so it's just as well I like a drink, otherwise I'd still be driving here. Um, uh, genuinely, thank you so much. When I found out I was nominated, I felt like a fraud because I was knapping a lot at the fringe, which is when I speak in an English tongue because I wanted fuck to laugh at my jokes. Um, <laughs> Don't lose any translation. But also, sometimes I, I never think about S Shetland as Scots, never for a while until I learn more about Scots language. And uh, it, it means a lot because up in Shetland, we have been trying to add on to our dialect for that long. It used to be Norn, one language. And then from about 16 to 1800s, it became, um, it became we started speaking Scots, so now our dialect is Norn and Scots mixed together. So what a wonderful two parentages. Parentages? <laughs> Don't know if there's a word for that in Shetland. Um, but a lovely mum and dad to hey. Um, but genuinely, it's, it's really, really fine. And I mean it a lot when I said earlier on with the Burns books, like encouraging Burns to speak it is the best way. Uh, but I would just like to thank uh, Shetland Forwards, who are an organisation who promote dialect in Shetland. And uh, my dad for teaching me words every day as well, because now and then he comes out with another word his grandmother used to use. Um, 
And also to Jakob Jakobsen, who rescued a lot of the shitland we have today back in the, who was it the 1800s? I kind of mind. But um, yeah, thank you very, very much. This means a lot with a lovely Hansel, and I'll take him home and put him on my fireplace and hopefully no drop him into the lounge flame. So thank you very much. <laughs> Now we're really into the meaty things. Another massive award, Scots Performer of the Year, sponsored by Tracks, the traditional arts and culture of Scotland. The nominees are Bundy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hamish MacDonald. And Joe Freer. <laughs> Katie Barnett. <laughs> <laughs> and to present the award, please welcome for Traditional Arts and Culture Scotland. He's a Scots Language Awards regular, David Francis. Thanks, everybody. Th this award is for uh, all the makers, actors, chanters that give us all such pleasure when they're using their own Scots lead. And the performer of the year for this year, I'm blithe to say, is Bundy. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm not right sure for to say here. Uh, that's how I kind of started off with me being scunnered, sitting at my kitchen table. So I just decided to write down some words and put it to music. Um, I'd like to thank Abby for organising this. It's been a great event. Uh, aye, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm not really sure for to say. Um, cheers to Darcy, my daughter, for coming in and coming to my doing. Um, I'd also like to say special thanks to my wife because I've been doing this for 20 years, which means she's been a long suffering wife. Um, there's only a musician's wife will can. I promised my daughter I wouldn't tell a joke, but I feel as though this is the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as I was on my way here, I saw us baby Brack crying. I says, ah, what's wrong, baby Brack? What's a D? says, oh, my mom's a wah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Cheers. Sorry, Darcy, that's awful. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Cheers. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Now, we're going to welcome out onto the stage in the finest voices in Scotland. Faye, the South West, she's won all sorts of awards, including BBC Radio Scotland's Young Traditional Musician of the Year. Please welcome Robin Stapleton. Good evening. How are you getting on? I can't see you that well with all this smoke. But... Uh, I'm delighted to be here amongst such great, friendly people. Um, I haven't been doing much singing the last wee while, so this is me kind of blowing off the cobwebs with... Um, well, I'm going to start off with a bit of Shakespeare. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> so uh, Simon's just a bit... <laughs> gonna, uh, no, uh, there's a, a fine songwriter that you might have heard of, and he's called Adam McNaughton. And uh, Adam was teaching, he's a, he's a teacher, and uh, he, he taught for many, many years. And when he was working in the high school in Cathcart, he was struggling a bit to engage the kids with, with Hamlet. So he wrote this wonderful parody, and he's called it Our Hamlet. Um, so here it goes. And this is in dedication to all the wonderful teachers out there that are working so hard and doing really, really important work in... Uh, basically giving young people pride in their own language. And I just think that is such an incredibly important and powerful thing to do. So in dedication of you, here's Adam McNaughton's Ur Hamlet. There was this king sitting in his garden all in, when his brother in his ear poured a wee tato hen bane. He stole his brother's croon and his money, and his widow and the deed king got and got his son and said, no, listen, kiddo, I've been killed and it's your duty to take revenge on Claudius, so kill him quick and clean and show the nation what a fraud he is. The boy said, right, old dear, but I'll need to play it crafty, and so nobody will suspect me all. Get on that I'm a dafty. 
So do I accept Harry show, cos he trusts him as a friend. Hamlet, that's the boy, kids on his run the bend. And because he was nae ready for obligatory killing, he tried to make the king think he was topping saf the shilling. Took the mickey at Polonius, treated poor Ophelia vile, tilled Rosencrantz and Guildenstern that Denmark was a jail. And a troop of travelling actors, like 784, arrived to do a special one night gig in Elsa Noah. Hamlet, Hamlet, loves his mammy. Hamlet, Hamlet, acting barmy. Hamlet, Hamlet, hesitating, wonders if the ghosts a cheat, and that is how he's waiting. So Hamlet writes a scene for the players to enact, while Horatio and him watched to see if Claudius cracked. The play was Cad the Moose Trap, no the one that's running new. And sure enough, the king walked out afore the scene was through. So Hamlet's got the proof, Claudius giddy star the dose. The only problem being new that Claudius knows he knows. And while Hamlet tells his ma her new husband's no a fit one, Uncle Claude puts it a contract with the English king as headman. Then when Laertes... Now, what happens after that? Somebody help me out. No, it's not Uncle Claude. When Laertes killed Polonius, the concealed corpus delecti was the king's excuse to send him for an English hemp and necktie. Where Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to make sure he got there, Hamlet jumped the boat and put the finger on the pair. When Laertes did a stop right through the artist, he come racing back to Elsa and orchard sweet hot food for Paris and Ophelia we are da. Killed by the man she wished to marry. After saying it with fleur, she committed Harry Carry. Hamlet, Hamlet, nay messin, Hamlet, Hamlet, learn his lesson, Hamlet, Hamlet, Yorick's crust. Convinced him that men good or bad at last must come to dust. Then Laertes lost the place and was demanding retribution. The king says, keep the heat, I'll provide you a solution. He arranged a sword fight for the interested parties. We are blunted sword for Hamlet and a sharp sword for Laertes. To make things double sure, the old belt and braces line. He fixed a poison sword tip and a poison cup of wine. The poison sword got Hamlet, but Laertes went and muffed it. Cause he could stab himself and he confessed afore he snuffed it. Then Hamlet's mammy drank the wine and as her face turned blue, Hamlet says, I quite believe the king's a baddie new. Incestuous murder is damned Dean, he said to be precise, and made up for hesitating by killing Claudius twice. Cause he stabbed him with a sword, forced the wine atween his lips. He cried, the rest is silence. That was Hamlet had his chips. They fired a volley at him that shook the topmost rafters. And Fortin Brass, knee deep in dames, left happy ever after. Hamlet, Hamlet, all oh the glory. Hamlet, Hamlet, end of story. Hamlet, Hamlet, I'm away. If you think this is boring, you should read the bloody play. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not really away. I've got another song, and I'm delighted to introduce my good pal and a wonderful pianist, Alistair Ian Patterson. <laughs> and uh, I'm really keen to sing uh, this next song. It's from one of my favourite Scots poets, Violet Jacob, and it's called Baltic Street. <laughs> My dainty lass, lay the blame upon the wrecked foot heed. It was daft and luck that picked your him the wrong side o' the tweed. Ye you hear your talk are complete, your bonny as a rose, but I was born in Baltic Street. In Baltic Street, Montrose, Lang sign on money's away for night, high out the sea's distress. I've seen the great arms o' oh, the light swing out face cardinals, and prudence in simmer blinks when land winds raise and fell. At We callants like myself. Oh, bold 
Celtic street is cold and bare, and maybe no say grand, but you'll feel the smell of the colour air, oh, keppers on the land. Twixt Kirk and street the deed folk bide, their feet towards the sea, El neighbours for a new made bride, can he Absolutely fantastic music for Robin there. Absolutely. I'd like to give special thanks to Robin for actually coming as my stunt double tonight. So that was a great outfit choice. <laughs> Unreal overlap there. So for our next team, we're going to welcome two of the Boris Fechters for Scots to the stage. We're going to invite the brains behind Scott's Hoos. He's a man who or set Harry Potter into Scots. He's done hundreds of good work over a long period of time to make sure that bairns and adults have access to quality Scots online and in print. And also a man that's done mayor for Scots in tertiary, in secondary and in primary education for Shetland all the way down to the borders. Please welcome Matthew Fitt and Bruce Janssen. Me or you? Who did I can? Way to go, boy. See the amazing young folk that write in Scots. The brilliant pupils in Scotland skills that hate an idea, sweat blood to turn that idea into a story, and write their story in a language that they've been no been trained to write in, that just about every adult around about them tells them is slang, or no proper, or incorrect, and that nobody will ever read it. Well, see the pupils that write the stories and poems and plays in Scots, they show no just immense ta writing talent and imagination, no just the smedham and flair to door to day something different in a system that expects and rewards monolingualism in creative writing. They show something more impressive than all that, bravery. We are here the next, the next to pay tribute to the bravery of six young Scots and other young Scots, in fact, that entered the Young Scots Writer of the Year competition 2024. Yeah, it's... Uh it's a very important award, very important to both Matthew and myself. And uh, we, uh, on a night like this, where we celebrate Scots language and add a fork who are done well in the year just came by, Scots Young Writer is an important one to whiz. It was judged this year by Kathleen Jamie and Tam Clark, to our passionate and dedicated writers themselves, who well, I'm sure were delighted to read the screaming so had a young folk were brave and bold enough to enter the competition. And say to our, uh, well, hold on, say in no na particular order. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right. yeah. Our, our four runners up, our six winners, are Cara Slavin for St Matthew's Academy in Saltcoats in North Ayrshire. Georgie Stephen for, is it Bancori? Michty, Michty, you're from Shetland. Aye, it's far too south for you. Aye, <laughs> Bankery, Bankery. Yeah, I was supposed to have Gordon Hyde. For a I came now to say Aberdeenshire. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Rowe for 
this next thing's in, in, in South Lanarkshire. Actually, you okay with that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Liam Rowe from St Andrews and St Bride's High School, East Kilbride, South Lanarkshire. And Tegan McLeod from Banff Academy, Aberdeenshire. Aberdeenshire. Second place went to um, Lucy Sutherland of Bucky High School in Murray. But we're getting to our winning story now, aren't we? Yeah. And our winner. Mm -hmm. So the winning story is called Juliet and Juliet. And just like the reference to the famous Shakespeare play, it's a tale of blood, tears, love, and death. This scene, though, is set on Scottish streets, on school buses, in playgrounds, bedrooms, and bathrooms. And Mr. Va is a story of two youngins, their tears bursting, their fates intertwined forever after being brave and bold enough to be different for the rest. As we are keen, stories like that will often end in tragedy, but the story becomes terribly bony by the tenderness they express for life and for love. And it's a story that would uh, uh, bring a one stain to tears. And um, the, the, the question there really is, um, how could such a young person produce such a, such a powerful story um, exploring emotions, relationships, and the cruelty of life itself? And the answer that comes back every time, especially for the judges, is that this young person can write. And to reveal, you want to do it? Well, I hope that we write in the story and be Kathleen and Tam awarding them the winner, that this writer will be brave and bold to share her fantastic talents with us again. The winner, we think might be here, <laughs> we're not 100% sure, is Eva McMillan. She's this 2022 20, Scots Young Writer of the Year. Yeah. 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 This is a book token and oh, also so a book signed by Anne Donovan, who we'll maybe see later on as well. Thank you very uh, much. Now, we know that you're um, not sure about reading this no. yourself, <laughs> but we have um, Len, who's going to read an excerpt from the story. Okay. That's okay. We've got a family. Thank you. Read it to it, yeah? Read it to it, yeah? So this is a wee excerpt for the winning entry. The scruffy old driver in the rugged wrecked bus. Soon as I stepped on, whoosh, I was blasted with sweaty, humid air. The bus was heaving. Mayor and mayor piled on, but nobody sat with me to the last stop. The bonniest lass I ever did see struts aboard and smiles at me as she takes up the unoccupied seat next to me. I smile back, of course. She's a chavy looking girl, but I glanced at her phone and she's listening to my type of music. And to be honest, I consider myself to be alternative in terms of fashion and in terms of music taste. Seems cool. Lang brown hair with yellow highlights, a skirt halfway up her ears, a strong <laughs> smelly Victoria's Secret and a sleeveless leather jacket over her shirt. She's proper fit for a chavy lass. Sweet face caked in makeup and tan she didn't need, but she's beautiful. She gets up and lets me overtake her instead of leaving me to fend for myself with all the shovers and such. Kind of. At break, I sit alone. It's my first day. New school, new house, new neighbourhood. Nay, pals. I see a group of lasses making eyes at me and laughing. I've always been an optimist, so I un unrealistically assumed they were interested in being my pal. I was wrong, though. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure that will not be the last we hear of her in the Scots scene, in the Scottish cultural scene, and here at the Scots Language Awards. Now, our next award, I, has a wheen of entries thanks to the Scottish Government's Scots Language Publication Grant. Our next award is Scots Book of the Year, and it's sponsored by the Scottish Book Trust, 
who gee out the siller every year. Now, this siller is geed out to publishers and to screevers and folk wanting to get new Scots work out into the world. It isn't admittedly in the hundreds of millions. A name that on the nominees lead is turning up here in the Lamborghini after they're getting a Scotch Book Trust Award. But the thing is, this wee doddy money that the Scottish government is geeing out, it's producing hundreds of work and having this muckle impact on the available Scots literature out there. The Scots Book of the Year, sponsored by the Scottish Brook Trust. The nominees are Be Good to Your Mammy by Emma Gray, Deep Wheel Arcadia by Josie Giles, Hard Roads and Cold Hairst Winds by Lee Bow and Du Fu in Scots, translated by Brian Holton, Northern Lichts by Leslie Benzie, Sheena Blackhall, and Sheila Templeton, Poema Scossese by Paul Mulgrati, There's My Mammy Waving by Josie Neal. And for the award sponsor, Scottish Book Trust, please welcome to the stage, Lindsay May. Hi, it's smashing to be here celebrating just such a wealth of talent. Um, it's just amazing. Um, and Scottish Book Trust is just so happy to be um, a sponsor for Scott's Book of the Year. So let's find out who the winner is. Yeah. Be good to your mammy by Emma Gray. <laughs> Um, well, my gran wanted me to marry Prince Harry, and I didn't do that, so I think she's going to have to accept that I'm the Queen of Scots now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to thank my publisher and also apologise to them because they're English and they did not understand what they were doing when they took this book on. Apparently, I set a new record. 30 years in publishing, no one had asked for that many edits because... They just didn't get it, but, you know, we got there in the end. Um, I'd like to thank Michael Dempster for answering approximately three billion questions on the Scots language from me <laughs> at 2 a.m. Um, I'd also like to thank my upcoming publisher, Louis Press, for all of their support and for everybody on Twitter for being so kind all the time. Thank you. Our next award is sponsored by Our Vice and is for Scots Champion. To present it, please give a big horn to Jack Kapner. Hello, it's, uh, it's quite a pleasure being here because um, Our Vice actually itself has its roots in this, this very event because uh, at the very first Scots Language Awards in 2019, there was a wee meeting afterwards and that was the birth of your advice. It's a real full circle moment coming here and uh, presenting an award. I'll say a wee uh, bit here before I get to the prize about uh, some of the work we're doing because Billy mentioned the, uh, the consultation that the Scottish Government is undertaking on the Scottish Languages Bill. Now, this is a massive thing for our community, for speakers of the lead off where, and uh, what we're calling for in our advice is for an end to the kind of piecemeal approach to Scots language policy, what we need is a full national strategic approach and an end to that kind of sector by sector approach. And the winner of this award is somebody that embodies that kind of value. He's somebody that doesn't need to treat Scots in a piecemeal sort of way. He brings it into every, every part of his life and his work. Now, Dr. Jamie Fairbairn, the winner of the award, is Dominus Scots Geography, Travel and Tourism, and the head of the Humanities Faculty at Banff Academy. His work with Scots has its roots in his own roots. He's fee Forgan Denny for the Brig Iron, and he flitted to the northeast in 1994. So Scots is in his past and in his present. For by Spanish, after a wee years in South America. His own personal passion for Scots brought him to start introducing Scots weather lessons at the skill. And the own passion was reflected back at him by the Bairns, many of them Doric speakers themselves, it being Banff. So when the SQA brought in the Scots Language Award, he'd loup it at the chance and ne'er look it back. The class started with seven buddies and knew he was in the he-twenties. 
But even mayor important, nor learning the bairns of boot Scots, Jamie works in Scots. Music, geography, politics, history, all these and mayor are learnt by Jamie with Scots as its medium. His approach to Scots in education is game-changing and radical, precisely because it normalises the lead. Scott says a muckle place in the lives of all his pupils, but Jamie's work eases up to hain legitimacy as a lead fit for the skill, fit for the office, fit for life. It's this kind of darg that unthurls twee hundred years of discrimination again the lead. Now, Jamie is learning mere nor 300 minutes of Scots a week since Banff Academy started offering Scots as a language choice to S3 students. For by, he's spreading his own good work by training other teachers in Scots and piloting a new open university course. Jamie, Mr. Fairbairn, as his students ken him, many of them might be watching the nicht, is a, is a chill that embodies the change that he wants to see in the world. He hasn't just teased up the Scots lead, but a sense of self-respect in his students, a respect for their lead, their culture, their place in the world. Our vice hopes Scots will finally begin a national coordinated strategic approach. And if it is, it'll be examples like Dr. Jamie Fairbairns that set the standard. So on behalf of Hands Up for Trad and our vice, it's a pleasure to present this award to him. And as a fairly lover of South America, they say, Viva El Fairbairn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not sure far he was talking about, but I'm up here anyway. Um, yeah, can I just give muckle thanks to Hands Up for Trad and for your advice as well, for the, the grand honour of Scots Champion of the Year. Um, and you've no idea what you've done here. You've no idea what this means to me in terms of the he's up to hold you with often that I'm doing uh, at Banff Academy and beyond. But I would share the spirit, Simon. Scots Champion, do you not get a sword with this? <laughs> no. <laughs> because I wouldn't mind a claymore, to be honest. Um, uh, I need to thank lots of different people. And uh, when I first started at school, Diane Anderson was on uh, there to, to give us a, a he's up. Uh, I'd also like to thank Matthew Fitt, Billy Kay, Bruce Yunson, uh, Sylvia Varnicke, Michael Dempster, uh, Frida Morrison, and everybody at the Elphinstone Institute did a project that ran for over a year at the school, and it was absolutely fantastic. My family, um, and my squeal, and many others who've encouraged me along the way, but mostly, uh, the Bairns at, at Banff Academy but have kind of um, trusted us to, to, to deliver this for them and, and they take it on. So to me, Scots is kind of part of the water go of Leeds uh, and wiser being around the world. And it's real worth lugging into the words of A.L. Kennedy when she says that the mere languages you speak, the mere pathies to the hearts of others. And when I bed in, in Colombia, South America, you were talking about, I learned to speak uh, Vayuno in the streets and to scrive reports in Castellano. Uh, Loons and Quines was uh, Pelaos and Pelas. And uh, the best translation of the word Camellando is the Doric word Chavan. <laughs> so, <laughs> most countries are multilingual and naturally so, and we are no exception. So, if in Burns uh, learn a, a boot and in Scots at school, it, it marks the world's mere muckle, nay less. Uh, so, when folk spear at me, uh, fit why study Scots, I basically say that to ease up your literacy, to give you a lift of confidence, to ken your own skills, to respect your own culture, to get your family involved, to keep out at the world, to get an extra qualification, fits nay to like. And there are many mere squeals doing that, uh, and we can see other work that they do in the next. Um, but one day we could work towards a day where uh, nay Bern feels that the why they speak at home with friends or at school is a barrier to their progress, fulfillment, good self-regard, good learning, and good mental health. Secondly, the Elkie Bairn has the chance to engage with their mother tongue in their learning and the chance of progression through that. And finally, that the culture of our communities is valued and celebrated. That's what I'm at Lent today at Banff Academy and fit teachers are doing in other areas of Scotland. So, hod yan. Um, and thanks again to the hunters of Bairns at Banff Academy and beyond that are putting their trust in us and just being themselves. But I'll, I'll finish off with a slogan, or battle cry, or a wheel Kent company that Mark Sheen just did it. Uh, muckle thanks. Cheers.
massive congratulations to Jamie. Now, we're going to welcome another tap end performer. Please welcome to his first ever Scots Language Awards, it's Bruce Fumi. Hiya, 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 hiya. Now, listen, you probably didn't ken me, right? And, uh, but I go about the place, right? And, and, and I tell jokes and stuff like that. And it's whenever I go places, whenever I walk on stage, there's confusion. I think it's because my accent says freedom! Uh, but my hairstyle says legalize it. It's a kind of, it's an unusual combination, right? Um, but the I think the reason that they got me here was because I make these videos about Scottish history and that, eh? And folk, uh, they'll come in the comments section and they they'll say, I heard the voice, but I didn't expect that face, eh? The racist gets, eh? But I did... <laughs> I did, I was, before the pandemic, I spent eight weeks in Australia and New Zealand in a stand-up show called Best of Scottish Comedy. That fairly screwed with our racial preconceptions, I can tell you that, eh? <laughs> Imagine some racist Aussie buys a ticket for Best of Scottish Comedy. I walk on stage and this is marketing bullshit, innit, eh? Hey, can I mean? Because we've all been caught up marketing from time to time, haven't we? You've been caught up marketing, I've been caught up marketing. I once booked an afternoon whale watching, Turned out to be a hen night in Kirkcaldy. It was not, <laughs> honestly, it wasn't what I'd expected. Some people are shocked at that. Strap yourselves in, right? <laughs> okay. It's, I, I've, had to, I've had to list the only jokes that I've got. They've got no swearing in it, right? Okay. You're like, Scots Language Awards. This is the bad language awards I'm coming for, like, you know what I mean? And so I'm Scottish, right? And in spite of the way that I look, I was born in Scotland, grew up in Scotland. I've lived all my life in Scotland. Every place I've lived, I've played for the local rugby team. Every time around on the rugby pitch, we go, oh, is he Samoan? <laughs> is he Fijian? Is he a Maori? Then he'd see me play, go, no, he's definitely Scottish. <laughs> Let me explain the background. The background is my mum's Scottish. My dad is from Ghana in West Africa. Uh, in fact, the Dundee Evening Telegraph said that I was the finest comedian on the Afro-Celtic comedy circuit, uh, which was nice. The Glasgow Herald said I was the only comedian on the Afro-Celtic comedy circuit. As I travel the world as an Afro-Celt abroad, there are three questions people always ask me. One, What's the Scotsman got in his sporran? Two, what's the Scotsman got under his kilt? And three, if you're half African, how would you hide it? The other questions, <laughs> the other questions they always <laughs> ask me. And uh, do you kind of see where the season came the day, right? What a night it's been, right? Because I came and I sat there, and a lot, you were all delighted when you saw Beth Malcolm came on, right? Okay? I was just, it made me feel terrible, right? Because I can't her feather, right? And um, when I say I can't, I actually can't, he bed in my street, right? I lived in Glover Street in Perth, eh, right? And I, I saw Beth on there, and I, I taught her for a wee bit in the school, right? I used to be a school teacher, I was a very popular physics teacher. Uh, uh, sawed off, yes I was, right? No, 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 stop it, right? The school that I worked in, the fifth year girls voted me, the school teacher most likely, to settle at a court, I'll have you know. Yes, yes, yes. And I remember, and I pictured her, I saw her in the thing, and I pictured, I would turn up and she would be this wee lassie with a guitar. And she's all adult and grown up in that, right? And it's her. And then I saw Irene McFarlane in the front there, and I thought, however bad it is for me, Irene taught Beth's dad and me. How shite must she be <laughs> feeling sitting there, eh? That's two swear words, sorry about that, right, okay? The, I normally do, like, comedy clubs and that. So, and, and the thing is, I remember when we were in primary school, right, okay? Because people say, it, it, it must have been really difficult growing up a mixed-race kid in Scotland in the 60s and 70s, and some things were difficult. Uh, like, trying to play reggae music in the bagpipes, that was hellish, like, and... And I remember at school, our, our, my careers teacher sat me down and said, Bruce, as a half Scottish, half African kid, you have two career opportunities. You can either become the finest comedian on the Afro-Celtic comedy circuit <laughs> or a jazz trumpet and a Cayley band. Well, my mum couldn't afford a trumpet and that's why I'm here tonight, to be honest with you. Eh? And... Um, 
And I remember when I was being at school, in the class, there was this Indian kid in the class, and I'm talking about a Scottish Indian kid, and this wee white Indian, no, not a white Indian kid, a wee white Scottish kid, said to the wee Indian Scottish kid, your dad came here to steal my dad's job. And the wee Indian kid said, why is your dad a consultant psychiatrist as well? <laughs> <laughs> he was there, he was there. But the thing is, eventually you were allowed to be brown and Scottish, but what you weren't allowed to do was to speak Scots in the classroom. You got into trouble for that all the time, and it's such a delight to be coming. We, we uh, nowadays, I get phone places to do burn suppers and stuff like that, right? Okay, and I have to do. I had to start by doing my research. Went down to Mochlin, spent a day in Mochlin where Burns grew to maturity. Walked the same streets Burns walked. Spent time in the house that Burns shared with his wife, Jean Armour. I even had a meal in the same Tandoori restaurant Burns frequented <laughs> when he lived in Mochlin. Now call me a cynic. I think they're milking that Burns thing just a little bit much <laughs> down there in Mochlin. I'm not convinced of their genuine love of the bard when their biggest selling meal was a Tandoori Burns my arse. I'm not convinced. <laughs> I'm not convinced. And I've got to travel about and do burn supper. Oh, I was once invited and performed a burn supper in the ambassador's residence in Rome, ladies and gentlemen. That I know, I know there's nothing makes you more proud to be a Scotsman than pissing in a plant pot in the ambassador's residence in Rome. It made me feel good. And it was all because when we were at primary school, I was in primary six, we had to do the burn speaking competition. And we all had to compete. After being told all year you weren't allowed to speak Scott, we all had to compete to see who was best at it, right? And we had, to, we had to recite Burns' interpretation of Robert the Bruce's great call to battle at Bannockmore. Scots were hey, were Wallace blend. Scots won Bruce has often led. Welcome to your gory bed or to victory. Now's the day and now's the hour. See approach the battle or see approach proud Edward's power chains. Slavery. What would be a traitor knave? What would fill a coward's grave? What say base is be a slave? Let him turn and flee. No, I didn't win that competition. In fact, I got detention for stabbing the English kid next to me. But I think <laughs> I captured the spirit of the poem. And it's a joy to see nowadays that so much more is happening in school and all, or schools and all that's happening here. Now, the thing is, you didn't have to listen to me anymore because this is your chance to go out and get pished, right? Okay, because this is a break. They're going to have a wee, and then you come back after the thing, and then there's going to be mayor of the same and awards and singing, and, and I'll be back, right, okay? Once they've got rid of the bairns, okay? So go and enjoy your, your break, and we'll see you after. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you all enjoyed the interval there. We're going to be starting off with an excellent performance for the Beth Malcolm Trio. But before we get into that, we hear a big sang to sing together. We got uh, a wee message just before we kicked off the first half there for Joao K. Well, let us ken that it's Mr. Billy K's birthday this evening. <laughs> so, uh, Billy, if you didn't mind standing to tack the applause, and Beth is going to lead us in a rendition of Happy Birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Billy. Happy birthday to Smash and it's Lang Mayor Lumrique Billy, and let's leave you with the Beth Malcolm Trio to kick off the second half. <laughs> this is part of it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Lad, come kiss me. While the toa burns in, and my nose sweet to 
is honey And why you let it go down when That is a beautiful poem um, written by Marion Angus about 150 years ago. And I loved what a wee rad she was. Quite saucy, really. Um, <laughs> um, and thanks uh, to Lewis McLaughlin and to Ewan McLaughlin, who are both um, the sound that you're hearing that is so lovely tonight, and also the house band. Um, so a huge thank you to both of them. <laughs> to, uh, <clears throat> Um, now, we're really folk musicians disguised behind some electric instruments. Um, so we're going to finish off um, with a Davy Steele song called Scotland Yet. Um, and I hope that if you know it, which I'm sure many of you do, that you'll join in. So this is Davy Steele's Scotland Yet. <laughs> the stuff. 
strands would break The choice will be upon us soon To set our destiny And we'll, we'll drink a toast to Scotland yet Whatever it yet may be Sing song for Billy. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Onward to our next nominees, and I could have minded that. I didn't even need that to be scripted. Our next award is Scots Business of the Year, which is sponsored by the Scots Language Society. This award is dead varied. It celebrates them that put Scots on their products, them that speak it in their work, them that get others a he's up through their business, and the nominees for the Scots Business of the Year are the Curry and Brody Ferry. Yeah, Restore in Lossiemouth and Murray, the Laurel Bank Hotel in Mark Inch, and Thompson's Family Butchers in Coldside Dundee. And to present the award, please welcome Emma Gray. Hi everyone, thank you for having me again. Um, and yeah, I'm really privileged to be presenting this award. And on a personal note, I actually remember the first time I saw a business using Scots, specifically in relation to drinks, which is quite appropriate. And on their menu, it was, do you want a muckle wan or a wee wan? And I thought that was great. Anyway, this is the winner of the Scots Business of the Year 2022. And it is... Restore Lossy Mouth! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I believe that Restore Lost and Booth weren't able to join us all the way down from Murray, so we're going to post this award up to them. But one more time for Restore Lost and Booth and for all the nominees. Here you go. I'll, I'll take it back. So this is one of our most important awards. It doesn't just celebrate the work done by Wayne's, but also by teachers and the school as a hail environment and recognises the gallus folk in the educational sector that he's up the lead. Scott's School of the Year is sponsored by Ichiku Black and White Publishing and the nominees in 2022 are uh, Gretna Primary School in Dumfries and Galloway. Yeah, let's hear it for them. Lossy Booth High School in Murray. Men's Academy in Aberdeenshire. Morgan Academy right here in Dundee. New Hill Primary School. No idea what New Hill Primary School is, but good on them. Perth High School, just down the road. <laughs> And Prestwick Academy, South Ayrshire. And St. Rose of Lima Primary School in Glasgow. Yay. And please welcome to present the award, Mr. Matthew Fitt. Thank you, Alec. 
It's brought me back then live events and seeing pals and everything like that. Unbelievable. And uh, as a writer and a visiting uh, teacher, it's brought me back in scales as well. And I've, I've been in Dundee scales for the first time in twa year and the past, past, past week or so. And um, it's brilliant to instead of hearing these horrible teams meetings to hear the bairns saying when they're, when they're reading a, a Scots text, the laddies at the back of the class who didn't really speak up when it's a teams meeting saying, Ken, that's the way I talk. That's brilliant. So, and it was also in a primary scale as well where the bairns are absolutely delighted to hear that bairns can, that, um, that Todd's are foxes in this one scale, uh, that um, Bockies are bats. And I was asking, I was talking about kind of Halloween themes and the word Tati Bogo came up and there was a kind of murmur in the room and there was a Tati Bogo. And one lassie suggested that it was manure. <laughs> HQ is a proud sponsor of the Scots um, Scale of the Year, and the hard-working dominies have had to thole incredible challenges in the past two years, uh, lockdowns and the, the post-lockdown as well. So we're absolutely delighted that the Scots Scale of the Year is uh, skill. Hmm. The twiles, okay, <laughs> is the same problem as Michael Dempster had. <laughs> Men's Academy. When I first started teaching at Mearns, I uh, asked my pupils, how come no one speaks Scots? And they went home and they asked their parents. And the parents said, it's because we got told not to. Uh, it's not very formal. It's not what we want to see in the school. And no one speaks it at Mearns Academy, or no one did. So we started a process of bringing it into the curriculum, uh, which culminated recently in us uh, winning the Doric Film Festival. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, my, my, my pupils are still embarrassed about it because they have that cringe about it. And I really hope that they can see this award and begin to see that it's not embarrassing to speak Scots. And I hope they can feel 10 feet tall. Um, thank you very much, guys. Amazing. Let's hear it one more time for all the schools nominated and all the schools doing that great work. And now, let's welcome back to the stage the outstanding performance poet, Mr. Hamish MacDonald. Um, I'm going to do a couple of slam poems since I did the slam comps this year. So I'm going to start off with my first one. It's called uh, Fish Van. It's a bit of a cautionary tale, OK? It goes like this. Here comes the fish man, he's in the fish fan. Oh, geez, a haddock fill it for your dish man. In an ardro smoky, in a couple of flukies. Oh, two bits of lemon sole and a bit of mackerel. But I don't like the way that that big cod seed's looking at me. So, Mr. Fish Man, how much is that, my man? That's £23.45, mate, there you go. £23.45, fish man. You're ripping the pish, fish man. That works out at... £3.35 a f***ing fish man, fish man. The fish man's furious, he's turning blue in the face. He says, do you think it's me that sets the f***ing prices? I says, we take some back, mate. He says, get the back, mate. I've honoured all your fish and have wrapped them up, fud. I goes your bam pot, it's daylight robbery. He grabs a conger, he only starts to clobber me. He hits me a wallop, I land in the scallops. And I don't like the way that that big cod sees looking at me. The fish man's mental, he's a total psycho. He blinds me in the eyes with Roscaline. He gets me on the deck. He hits me with a hake and slaps me in the cooping with a turbot, a pickled heron, a slimy sea bream, assaulted with a salty ling by a sick psychotic sociopath, free fit and weem. I'm lying on the deck, I'm lying there pulverised, I'm totally traumatised, and I'm wobbling like a great big jellyfish. I'm walking down the road, psychotic episode, everywhere I look I'm seeing fish, 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 fish. I see pedestrians, they're aquafabians, and the horns and feet are turning into flukies. I see a polis. He sees an octopus, and I see a bunch of lobsters in the bookies. I'm having nightmares, I'm having fright scares. I'm being haunted by a great big wide eyed cod, an ugly pollock, an evil monkfish. I slap the boss in the heat, but free a halibut. 
I'm growing scales and gills. I'm on prescription pills. And they've locked me in a psychiatric unit. I'm ichthyophobic. They've diagnosed it. That means I fear a fish in my back. And fear the fishman has exposed it. I've had a breakdown. Complete neurosis. Now they're trying to find a way to cure my fish psychosis. They're giving me treatment. They're giving me counselling. To find a way to live with my condition. I reduced anxiety. I'm making progress. And I'm weaning my way off my medication. I'm back in the community. It's an opportunity. To live my life without the fear of fish I'm walking down the road I see a vehicle Here comes the fish man He's in the fish fan Stuff this, I'm going vegan Thank you Thanks very much hey, I'll do one mayor, slam poems are Usually about three minutes long. We'll do one more three minutes slam poem. And uh, this is the ground rules here. This bit right here, this bit is my bit. And that bit over there is your bit, okay? My bit, your bit, okay? My bit. I was throwing in my bit, in my bit and this boy came. I goes, oh, what are you doing? He goes, this is my bit. I, I lifted a stick and he ran like a rabbit. We come back with his pals. He goes, oh, what are you doing? He goes, this is your bit. No, it's no. You stick to your bit and we'll stick to your bit. We went to school and played in the playground. We'd worry in, but sometimes I'd wander off around any of their bits, but I'd end up coming back with their bits. Anyway, time passed and I wound up with a house with a garden, but I ended up off a nebby and crab it for twitching the curtains and looking after my bit. See if that ball comes in here once more, I'll put a knife through it, and see if that kit never craps again in the begonia, I swear I found it. I'll take a sack and I'll flame and well do it. I don't care if it was your third birthday present, hen. That's exactly what will happen if it doesn't curtail its habit for crapping in my bit. We went our holidays to the Costa del Sunstroke. We were in a hotel with a poolside bar with Sky Sports, Chips and the Daily Star, and if they wandered there, we'd go, ho! Oh, Use party in your bit and we'll party in our bit. <laughs> Things in our bit took a turn for the worse. The firms all shut down and the banks all went burst. And they moved it all off to a far away bit where they paid them in washers and the conditions were shit. Aye, but they still came for their bit. To their bit, didn't they? See, I warn yous, every one of yous, this is just the start, eh? So I started to do a bit political party. And I wore a sharp suit and a big cheesy grin. And I went round the poor bit of your bit and I told them we'd win if we put up the shutters and let them in. And we got some barbed wire and we built a big fence. And we wore the fatigues of the urban defence. We all started singing and hoisted a rag. And we had our own national anthem and flag. Your bit is the best. Your bit is a shite holo. Your president is a big sex pest. Your national dance is for mincing fuds. Your bit stonking, your bit's honking. G-I-R-F-U-I-L-O-O-L. Then our bit started to run low on supplies, but we decided we'd get tooled up and start to colonise. And reparations for generations of wrongs perpetrated for your bit and our bit. We're taking this bit of your bit for our bit, but we're keeping the border, and that's the new order. And then this Judas, this Judas for your bit. What happened was, he made so bold. The trees in his garden started fruiting with gold. Eureka moment, joy untold. We started to rejoice at this national salvation. Then he signed up a deal with a big corporation. And he got some barbed wire and he staked to his claim. And he goes, this is my bit. And yous are getting in. What? This isn't your bit. This is my our bit. No, it's not. It's my bit. And I've signed up to a treaty, so don't try to grab it. And he sealed off his airspace and declared no fly zones. And the United Bits Army came with gunships and drones. So this is the old adage of the fan and the shit. We started to subdivide and partition and split. My bit for your bit, his bit for her bit, our bit for their bit. See this bit right here, right here, this bit's my bit. It's four foot before, but six and a half foot. Don't touch it, don't come near, don't breathe my air. It's my bit, okay, my bit. Thank you. Here, that was amazing for Hamish there. It's been amazing for, for Beth Marco, it's been amazing for Robin, it's been amazing for the lads, it's been amazing for Bruce, it's been amazing for Hamish. Incredible. Um, I'm just gonna gee, uh, as we said, this is, this is a hybrid event where you at home are able to fire in your remarks and uh, your comments, and we're getting comments for you all over the place, which have been smashing. But as promised, I've got some Scots jokes for the world outside. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What has four legs and carries a machine gun? A military coup. <laughs> it's not bad, it's not bad. 
Eh, can I tell that, Ian? Oh, this is a classic. He's locked in the scene, but we should bring it out anyway. Man goes into a dentist, sits in the chair. Comfy, the dentist asks. <laughs> Govan. <laughs> the man replies. What's wrong with Mickey Moose's helicopter? It doesn't land. It doesn't land. I, oh, I, I, I ruined that. You did. I ruined that. I'm sorry. That was... <laughs> Uh, that was for Jack in the room as well. I'm awfully sorry, Jack. I ruined your good joke. Uh, Aberdeen has its in horse in horse tranquilizers. Do you ken for it means? <laughs> <laughs> this is for um, oh God knows who's that for. But uh, the joke goes: Did you hear about the lonely prisoner? He was in his cell. <laughs> uh, oh, this was one for you. Man goes to the doctor, says, Doctor, I've got addicted to Celebrations chocolate so much my armpits smell like coconut. The doctor goes, Aye, bounty. <laughs> That'll do for just now. Should we get the next award and leave the jokes there? <laughs> hey, cheers, Abdi Ahim. Keep firing your jokes in. We'll get two or three more in before the end of the night. Let's move on to our next award. So I'm now going to present the Janet Paisley Lifetime Achievement Award, and I'm going to try not to agree, but I'm not going to promise anything, OK? So... Anne Donovan is the screever of the short story collection Hieroglyphics and Other Stories and the novels Buddha Da, Be and Emily and Gone with the Leaves. All that glisters won the Macallan Scotland on Sunday short story competition. Our short stories have appeared in many anthologies including Glasgow Women's Library 21 Resolutions and Maisty Her Work is set in Glasgow and screeved in Glasgow Voices. A dominant for many year, Anne was chuffed to bits when some of her own stories were picked as set texts for the SQA National Five examinations. She enjoys day in workshops and readings for school students, and she's also been involved in screening resources for Scots in the curriculum. I knew the sad part. Uh, reading All That Glisters as a Wayne was actually the first time that I had seen Scots represented in a voice that I can't behem, and it was speaking about something extremely sad and extremely relatable for me. And um, I reread it last night with my ma, and we both couldn't stop greeting because every time you read it, it's one of these stories that it just never leaves you. Um, seeing a female author, Dane Arane Hing and Arane Lead, inspired me to start screaming in Scots, and I'm hurt glad to present this award to Anne on my own. So, Anne, I just want to say thank you for Hunter's Ewains and them that's grown up for being the inspiration I hint a Hunter stories. Thanks, Anne. So please welcome to the stage the 2022 Janet Paisley Services to Scots winner. It's Anne Donovan. overwhelmed enough already but after you said that that's I think that's just about me because I don't think there's anything that um in terms of my writing I, I would want m more than that that that, that it, it, it touches folk and it, it means something to them and also that it inspires inspires folk to write themselves I, ca I can't think of anything better than that um I, as you said it First of all, just to say, it, for me, it's this incredible honour to get this. And Janet Paisley was an inspirational writer, a, a very generous and supportive person to other writers as well. So to have something in her name is, is very, very special. Um, I, as you said, I was, I was a teacher. And one of the things about tonight that's been absolutely fantastic is to see, to hear all the things that are happening in schools and the changes that have happened, because that was one of the things that, is just really hard when you're teaching and you're trying to get your wains to write in Scots talking and you feel there's this there's this barrier um so that it's I think what's happening now is fantastic and also the, f the fact that a lot of um younger uh, writers are taken to platforms where they're they're getting out in a, in a really really different way so I, I just I don't I don't really know what else to say I, 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 there are so many people that I could thank because like I was t inspired by so many writers as well, um, and so many folk were very helpful to me. In fact, one of them's here tonight, which is Liz Lockhead, who um, was a brilliant inspiration to me and, and so kind and helpful. Yeah, and when I, when I was on a, write, a writing course, and, and lots of other folk like that, um, folk on the way, and when we were 
doing sort of Scots materials. Liz Niven, who I don't think is here tonight, was a, was a, a, a brilliant friend through that. Matthew um, and James Robertson, who got me to, something I'd never done before, translate, <laughs> translate uh, Roald Dahl's Matilda into Scots, which was an amazing experience. And also Matthew has done fantastic work in schools for many years, but Matthew is also an utterly brilliant writer on his own right. And I think sometimes he doesn't, that doesn't actually come out as, as much because he does so much for schools and for education. So I'm, I'm so, so chuffed um, by all that. And really, I'm very, very happy for that, that we, feel, we feel as if things are moving forward and, and being good. However, I know the Scottish Government is doing a lot of stuff in organisations, but there's just one thing. I don't know how everybody else feels about this. I feel the NHS Scotland have got an issue here because since when did an inoculation or a vaccination become a jab? <laughs> when we have got a much, not just a different word, but a much better word than that because jag is a jaggy word. <laughs> And jab isn't he a jaggy word, so please, <laughs> anybody who's got any influence there, get them to start calling that a Scotch jag. Thank you very much. So Len is just the one to present the award uh, backstage and get the picture taken. You'll be back out for the next team. Your next award is for Scots Teacher A of the Year. You've heard all through the evening how important teachers are to this hail regeneration of Scottish culture, more generally, and the Scots lead in particular. The Scottish Government, Education Scotland, the SQA and the Scots Language Centre are all putting Mayor Energy and Siller into getting Scots back into schools. And this is vital and we're seeing a momentum shift, but nothing can be achieved in changing Bairns' experiences in schools without teachers. And that's what we're celebrating with the next award. Scots Teacher of the Year, sponsored by the Scottish Qualifications Authority. The, Sc the nominees are Amanda Dunn, Shortley's Primary School, Kilmarnock. <laughs> Andrew McRae, Doing the Road in Perth High School. <laughs> Catherine McKenzie, Deputy Head Teacher, Gretna Primary. David Scott, Mason Jew, Primary School, Breakin and Angus. <laughs> Diane Anderson, Deputy Head Teacher along the road at Morgan in Dundee. Irene McFarlane, Strathallen School, Perthshire. <laughs> Miss Morrison, Cardinal Newman High School, North Lanarkshire. <laughs> Scott Shields, Craigie Barnes, Primary School here in Dundee. And Simon McMahon, St Andrews Primary. Well done to all the nominees. And to present the award, Scots Teacher of the Year from SQA is Marlon Waters. Welcome to the stage. Thank you, thank you, Ali. And wow, what a fantastic night and what an honour to get to present this award. Oh my goodness. Um, something to add to everything else we've heard tonight from all the teachers and everybody else who's been up, up and down. The numbers of students taking the Scots qualifications at SQA is continuing to go up and everything we've heard tonight is a testament to that and to the brilliant and inspiring work of Teachers of Scots. The winner of the Scots Teacher of the Year is none other than Amanda Dunn from Sharpley's Primary School, Scots Teacher of the Year. I'm pure shocked. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I was sorry, I was grateful enough just for the nomination. But it was funny how so many folk have been talking about like teachers and stuff, and that's exactly why I do it. I do, I suppose. When I was in my probation year, I remember getting checked all the time for the head teacher saying, "You're talking to slang. You're not professional. Talk to the parents." And the best thing I did was moved to a school where I grew up and all the Waynes and parents just talk like me and I'll, I don't know. So thanks, thank you so much. Thank you to my husbands, my kids, all the boys and girls at Short Leaves, all the West Coast folks, sorry, East Coasters, but <laughs> one day Ayrshire. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm delighted to say we're getting the fantastic Bruce Fumi back out of your some air comedy. Let's hear it for Bruce. Hi, 
hey, they, they let me come back. Can you believe that? They let me come back and let me, I, I, should you say, I, I'll be honest, right? See, the last, that was the first prize I, I had. A, I wanted Irene to win it, I'll be honest with you, right? Because she taught us at the school. Nothing against whoever the lassie that won it. Good on you, lassie. But I wanted you to come second, right? Okay. <laughs> Uh, but there you go, you'll always be my, yes. Because I'm Faye Perth, and she used to, before she went all posh in private school, right? She taught at Perth High School, eh? and I'm Faye Perth. I live in a wee village called Blackford now, right? Now, you lock in Blackford, eh? Because you've seen the Highland Spring water bottling plant as you've got them doing the A9, eh? You can where I'm on, eh? Right? I, everybody kens Blackford, right? Because they see that. Although, when I go down south, London, places like that, and I say Blackford, they go, no, never heard of it. I say, it's where we make the Highland Spring bottled water. They get, oh. I suppose that means when you drink tap water, it's just like drinking Highland Spring water. <laughs> I say no. It means when you drink a bottle of Highland Spring water, I've probably pushed in it first, right? Now, generally speaking, <laughs> they don't like that. Um, but we still pee in their water. Um, don't drink the export stuff. That's my advice to you. Anyway, a guy like me from rural Persia to come up to a night like this and speak to you guys not once but twice is not only a privilege, frankly, it's an inconvenience, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> but we're here, and I thought I should do Because you hear so many folk talk about being ashamed of being Scottish and speaking Scots, and, and we need to be proud, right? Because Scots built the modern world, am I right, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, Scots built the modern, we gave the world the telephone, we gave the world the television, we gave the world tarmac roads, we gave the world penicillin. Okay, we gave them venereal disease in the first place, but to be, to, that's gotten, the point is, every development in science and engineering, it was a Scotsman that did it, am I right? Yes. Every development, Scots made such a contribution to the world of science and engineering that to this day, engineers still measure microscopic distances in a unit of the ball hair. That's right, that's Scottish, isn't it? That's Scottish, isn't it? You get a kilometre, a metre, a centimetre, a millimetre, a ball hair. Eh? You even hear Scots on the national telly, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Right? Whenever you watch a snooker at the Crucible, you'll hear the talk commentator go, oh, he's missed it by a ball here, hasn't he? That's ah, Scots on the telly, isn't he? I once did a gig in a British club in Bahrain, right? And after the gig, there was this one of their bars, was a sports bar. They had the flat screen telly with a football and a pool table. And there's these two British guys playing these two Arab guys at pool. And a big argument broke out. One of them, one of the British guys goes to one of the Arab guys, you touched the black. No, 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 you touched the black. No, 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 you touched the black. And the Arab guy goes, I missed it by a ball here. The Arab guy! Oh, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment in my life. Scott's poetry has reached places that Robert Burns, Sir Walter Scott, Hugh McDermott and Jackie Kay have never reached. Oh, he, the Arab guy saying I missed it by a boy. I can see tomorrow morning Len Penny and her word of the day is going to be what Scott's for 70 microns are bought here. It's going to be there. I'm telling you, she's told me she's going to be doing it the morning, right? Turns out. Everyone's going mental. Some of them are getting their balls on the pool table to see what a ball here was, right? And it's the first time I've seen a game of pool. Four white balls, four brown balls. Nobody's got a cue. They're all trying to work out what a ball here was. And it turns out it was just a big misunderstanding. It turns out the Arab ball here is thicker than the British standard ball here. Yeah. The British standard ball here. Yeah. Standardised by Isaac Newton, but invented by a Scotsman. There you go. The thing is, everyone, see these days, as you travel about the place, everybody's worried about the security question, aren't they? Everyone's worried about the security. As soon as they raise the security question, Daily Mail readers go, Muslims! Whenever they raise the security question, I think, what's my mother's maiden name? Because that's an important security question, isn't it? What's your mother's maiden name? That's it. And it's a rubbish security question. Back home in Perth, where I'm from, there's a whole generation of people older than me that know who I am, and they know my mum's maiden name. The number of times I'm out about in Perth and some old guy will go, oh, you're Val Sharps, laddie. And I go, oh, do you know my mum? 
I know your fucking pin number, mate. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's not a... Uh, Secure. Sometimes they try and make it more sophisticated. Sometimes they'll say, what's your mother's maiden name and what was your first pet? <laughs> I'm not telling you that. That's my porn star name, eh? <laughs> Everybody in the pub knows that. <laughs> right? Now, earlier on, I tell you, I was out in Australia and New Zealand on a stand-up show called Best of Scottish Comedy. It just so happens, outside Adelaide, at the same time as Adelaide Fringe Festival, in a place called Mount Barker, is Australia's biggest Highland Games. Now, you can the saying, right? Upstairs for dancing, downstairs for thinking. I, I messed that up, eh? It's downstairs for dancing, it's upstairs for thinking. That's why I'm a crap dancer and I failed all my exams, right? Okay? <laughs> downstairs for that. Up, We'll go to the Highland Games and we'll hand out flyers for Best of Scottish Comedy. And I'm handing out flyers for Best of Scottish Comedy. And this old guy went, oh, where are you from? I said, I'm Scottish, you racist git. He says, no, he says, I can hear for your accent you're Scottish. He says, I'm Scottish too. Forty years ago, I left Scotland and came out to Adelaide to make a new life for myself. He said, I meant, what town in Scotland are you from? I said, I'm from Perth. He said, I'm from Perth too. Forty years ago, I left Perth and came here to Adelaide to make a new life for myself. He said, what area in Perth did you live in? I said, Craigie. He said, I lived in Craigie too. Forty years ago, I left Craigie and came here to Adelaide. He said, what street in Craigie did you live in? I said, Glover Street. He said, I lived in Glover Street too. And he looked me up and down. He said, you're Val Sharps, laddie, aren't you? <laughs> Now, if I can go to the other side of the world and somebody knows my mother's maiden name, it's not a secure security question. <laughs> but the thing is, they're at it all the time, aren't they? They're at it all the time. Every time you go anywhere, they're trying to get you to harvest your date, aren't they? They're wanting your email address, they're wanting your phone number. Every Recently, I went into Curry's in Perth to buy a set of headphones, right? Now, I, I went to the desk to pay for the headphones, and the boy goes, oh, we'll need your name, your email address, and your postcode. And I'm like, that's bollocks, isn't it, right? They don't, they're just trying to harvest my date. I said, you don't need my postcode to sell me a set of headphones. He says, oh, we need it for the guarantee. I said, what are you trying to tell me? That these headphones only work on certain postcodes? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> like these headphones work everywhere in the country apart from Fraserburgh. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Right? Because my wife's family are from Fraserburgh. Trust me, when you're in Fraserburgh, you need headphones, right? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> right? The point is, right? Because apparently there are some places, there are some places in the country, right, that some technology doesn't even work. Right, now I'm looking at you, lasses, right? You must have this experience. You can when you're swiping through Tinder. You can <laughs> Aye, aye, she's going, aye, I can what you're on about, right? Her pal's saying nothing, right? You know you're swiping through Tinder and you're swiping, you're swiping, you're swiping, and eventually go, this is goosed. And then you realise you're in Fife. Have you ever had that experience? Because <laughs> you know they don't have Tinder in Fife, do you know that? They use findmancester.com to do the same thing. Do you know this, right, okay? It's, oh, there are too many Fifers in, right, okay. <laughs> It's a joke, shut your puss, right, okay? <laughs> it's just made up, none of this shit happened, right, okay? The point is, no, it did happen, I'm, the po I'm in this, and I'm trying to buy a set of headphones, and the guy won't sell me a set of headphones, and this is in my tune, this is in Perth, this is where I'm fit, this is where I am a somebody, this is where I am the finest comedian on the Afro-Celtic comedy circuit, yeah! <laughs> And I said to the guy, do you know who I am? He said, yeah, you're Val Sharps, laddie. <laughs> I've been Val Sharps, laddie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely class. Absolutely class. It was only a matter of time until Fife got it tight. <laughs> Our next award is for Scots Media Person of the Year. And once Mary is absolutely hoaching with newcomers to the Scots language, this year... Doric Hertlands of the Northeast are very, very well presented and <laughs> ah, across the social platforms. Uh, our nominees are the We Scottish Book Club podcast by Natalie McMath and Scott Shields, Doric Dad, who's big on TikTok and is here tonight, <laughs> Aberdeen Manny, and the, and, oh sorry, I didn't take the right way around, <laughs> and also Chris Reed, 25 
875 was big on TikTok and needs to hear a word with himself about his handle. <laughs> and I'd like to say to present the Scots Media Person of the Year 2022, sponsored by the Dictionaries of the Scots Language, it's Mr. Robert McCall Miller. Hello folks, I'm going to be self-indulgent to start off with because uh, my daughter, uh, Mary, was one of the, uh, the wins for the uh, Merms Academy that just won a prize a wee while ago. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. Uh, I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, I... Okay, the winner of the nomination for Media Person of the Year in Scots is Doric Da. <laughs> Wow, uh, I'm not a big fan of speaking, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> cheers. It's uh, that's gonna look grand in the mantelpiece. Like, uh, I'd just like to say thanks to McQueen for getting me onto TikTok for a start, and my wife for letting me bide on TikTok for a while, you know. <laughs> um, and thanks for having voted. Cheers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. We're now at our final award of the night. <laughs> Let's take a second to give a big final applause to all the nominees. Let's hear it for, the, for all the nominees tonight. Smashing. Let's hear it for all the presenters who have come out, like Robert, like Jack, like Abdi Elves. They came up to give it the awards absolutely smashing. And let's hear it for all the winners so far, including Doric Dad there, who has a fan of the speaking. What's our final award, Len? <laughs> Keep it together. Hold it together. Our final award is for Scots Writer of the Year. The nominees of the Scots Writer of the Year are sponsored by the National Library of Scotland, and they are... Uh, Anne McKinnon, Josie Giles, Jaimini Jethwa, Leslie Benzie, and Liz Lockhead. To present the award, please welcome your new Scots Screever for the National Library of Scotland, Shane Strachan. Fit like Abdi, or should that be fit like Nuku? <laughs> um, I, unlike Doric Dad, I am speaking. I'm nice, nice. Still nice speaking. Um, and I, I'm also phrase the brass, so get your, get your headphones out to cover your ears. <laughs> and um, I just want to say, as a writer, a queer writer writing in Scots, who proved I was oh, the story written by the young Scots writer. I just think that's fantastic. So, really pleased to see that. And also, just a fantastic list, a short list for this award. So the winner of oh, Scots Writer of the Year, if I can work out to open the envelope is Liz Lockhead. <laughs> much. Gosh, um, when I heard that I'd been nominated, um, I thought I better bring something to read um, in case, well, you know the way whenever you really don't want it to rain, you take an umbrella. <laughs> well, you know, it's in that sort of principle. So um, uh, I feel a bit of a fraud, actually, uh, because I do write in Scots, but mostly drama. You know, it's mostly uh, in other people's voices. But now and again, I do write in full-blown Scots myself. And I've been um, kind of 
uh, influenced by certain people. You know, um, of course, it was Burns when I was wee, um, both from my mum and from the miners of the miners' welfare that had the competitions every year uh, and that really, you know, wanted you to do Burns. And uh, the next person that really influenced me a lot, I think, was John Byrne, when uh, I saw the Slab Boys, and I thought to myself, are you allowed to do that? <laughs> and the next person that really influenced me was somebody that you've seen twice on the stage earlier today, Matthew Fitt. Um, I was writer in residence at uh, Edinburgh University in, I think it was 85 and 86, but in 86, into my office came this person who was so confident, and he was, I think, just 17 at the time. Um, it was his, his first year at Edinburgh University, and he'd come in, and he knew he wanted to write in Scots, and that he had the perfect right to write in Scots. And I just thought, he's just like John Byrne. You know, he's somebody that's got the courage to just do exactly what he wants to do. And uh, he influenced me a lot. Uh, at the time, and as he was reminding me, while he was there that year, I was writing Mary Queen of Scots got her head chopped off, and I was, I think, very, very influenced by the fact that you could do Scots and really make it poetry, if you liked, and uh, so I brought one, a recent one. I don't very often write in Scots in my own voice. I do sometimes, but um, I did last year for the Dictionary of the Scottish Language um, people. There's a new version of the, of the dictionary out and it's got new words in it. Um, it's got things like um, taps aff, you know, <laughs> the cry of, um, of uh, Glaswegian men on their way to, in a sunny day, on their way to the botanics, taps aff. And the other one that instantly became word that I use all the time that went into the dictionary was cluster burach. <laughs> I'd never heard it before, but I adopted it instantly. Um, but it didn't get into this poem that I wrote last year. Um, I was asked, would I, um, I was already writing the poem, but I was asked, um, would I write a poem uh, in a Western, what was it? West of Scotland, Scots. So um, that's where I come from. So that's where it had to be. So this is just a poem about very basic things, and it's called Ashet. Apparently, Ashet is um, a Scots word that came uh, into the language at the time of Mary, Queen of Scots. It's Asiet, you know, uh, that kind of plate. So anyway, Ashet. On your Zoom the other day, a wee bit friendly Argie Bargy stirred it up about what exactly was an Ashet when it was at home. Some would have it, it was a muckle great delft platter for serving, say, a hail jig of mutton roasted with all the trimmings. And others insisted, no, it was nothing but a humble enamel pie dish, such as you'd maybe make a shepherd's pie in, or yes for reheating, oh aye, in a guy ho oven, yesterday's left our stovies, or day afore pie day pan haggis. Never ever crying that skirly, not at all. No here in Gleska, no in the West. There's folk wouldn't gee house room to this shabby old chrome plated slotted spoon with hardly a scrap of red or black paint left in its wooden horn all but it was my mother's. I hod it in my horn with my heat full of mince and reminiscence, thinking how a clock could be a clock or a black beetle. How a sear heed is a sear heed, but a sear horn is a piece and jam. Oh, as long as the slice of white breeze, a big thick slab, and the jam rid a strawberry or rasp, the blood, the bandage. And I'm wondering, since the press in my kitchen contains both a chipped bog standard wee white pie dish, and the an oval antique Art Nouveau Loselware Tulip Macintoshy serving dish I got for a shilling in the Kirk Jumble sale in the 60s. Pie dish or platter, which is the classic, classic asset? Och, settle an argument with a friend. We bit of elementary detective work in a dictionary, and here it turns out it's no either or, 
but baith and, which is even better for mayor is I was mayor than less in my book, you know. And I'll tell you one thing for sure. See my brand new winter dykes I ordered online and that arrived the other day for Amazon and might not be made of wood, but rather of clean plastic and lightweight metal and have an awfully well-designed and nifty way of folding down to nothing to store guy neatly in the lobby press or opening out like wings and taking a lot more clays than my pulley ever could. Well, I tell you, it'll I be my winter dykes. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> and the most important thing with language is it's not either or, it's always both and. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our final award. Let's hear it again for Liz Lockhead. What a treat, what a treat. <laughs> she tinted her award there, but she got it now. So let's just say a few thank yous. Thank you to Hands Up for Trad and Simon Tumar for organizing the event. Thanks to the Gardine Theatre for hosting. Cheers to Spike backstage for coming to the rescue there. Cheers to all the sponsors for making tonight happen. Cheers to Creative Scotland for Guinness the Siller to make happen this year and every other year. And cheers to you in the room for coming along tonight. It's been great fun. We're going to leave you with a performance for Robin Stapleton. And I hope we see you all next year. Well, what a privilege to be asked to sing a few songs at the end of such a special night of celebration. And um, one, a great joy for me is singing songs from my home region. So if you'll let me, I'd like to share this one. It's called The Lads That Were Reared Among Heather. And it would be wonderful if you were to sing it along with me. Here's me. <laughs> Come on, ye young lassies, what have you been? Sits rosy and sleepy, I can tell by ye ring. In all this wide world, I ne'er had a friend like the lads that were reared among heather. Oh, poets, we've plenty to this present day that can sing just as sweet as the birdies in May. There's some of oh, them deed, but I'm proud for to say they were lads that were reared among the heather. Gay away with your silks, your satins and shawls, your swarries and perties and your elegant moss. For a dance in the barn is worth ten in the house with the lads that were reared among the heather. Tag a walk in your cities, grand buildings outside, and gaze on the grandeur we speak o' oh, we pride. Find silks he been built on the banks o' the glen by the lads that were reared among heather. Gay a wall with your silks, your satins and shawls, your swarries and perties and your elegant moss. On a dance in the barn is worth ten in the halls with the lads that were reared among heather. New England can bow to the sweet scented rose, and Ireland is proud of the shamrock she grows. But give me the land where the clear water flows, and the mountains high covered with heather. Give a wall with your silks, your satins and shawls, your swarries and perties, and your elegant moss. For a dance in the barn is worth ten in the house. The lads that were reared among the heather. Be a war with your silks, your satins and shawls, your swarries and perties, your elegant moss. For 
a dance in the barn is worth ten in the halls with the lads that were reared among them. Thank you very much. Um, before we leave you with our, our final song, many, many congratulations to everybody that's here um, and involved in um, the uh, involved in any way with the Scots language. And, and thank you for having us this part of tonight's special celebration. Um, we're going to from the southwest of Scotland. We're going to now finish with a song from the from the northeast. And this is one I heard from the singer of Tam Spears and Arthur Watson. And it's the story of a young lad that goes down to into Glasgow looking for a good time and it doesn't quite go as planned. Um, so it's got a smashing chorus that goes, Hook on linky do, linky doodle day, hook on linky doodle to die. I think some of you might can already. So um, I just invite you to all sing with us. This is Jock Hawk's Adventures in Glasgow. Thanks again, everybody. <laughs> Gatun, I went in neck to spend my penny fee When a bonny lass she gave consent to bear me company Hook on lanky do lanky doodle day Hook on lanky doodle to die She kent I was a plumin' lad, a stranger to the toon She said that need na hinder ye to jog it up and doon Hook on lanky do lanky doodle day Trick June make a street and do the primmy law where the organ lads are playing and the fiddlers in our twa. Hook on lanky do lanky doodle day. Hook on lanky doodle to die. I went into a tavern and I caught for some gin and all the folk up in the place they smiled as we came in. Hook on lanky do lanky doodle day, hook on lanky doodle to die. I had not been in half an hour when in came half a score. Oh, sailor lads and quaint sea bride never saw before. They drank the malt, they drank the wine, they drank it all right free. And Elka and I drank till the body we lost and me. Oh, hook on lanky do lanky doodle day. and sang till day was drawing near and then the sailor's captain cried all hands on deck appear hook on lanky do lanky doodle day hook on lanky doodle do die the lasses get a pert and kiss the lads they said goodbye the hen mission as he could do said jock give a to pie hook on lanky do lanky doodle day hook on My watch, they took my chain, they took for me my knife. It's a wonder that they didn't talk my wee bit spunk alive. Hook on lanky do, lanky doodle day. Hook on lanky doodle to die. Well, I come into this world a bear and say naked and say bear. I'll come with the same fig lies and I'll never go near bear. Hook on lanky.